show you what I'm working with today. Okay, don't judge me, don't judge me. This is very disorganized, kind of all over the place. I don't know what happened. So <laughs> here we have my yarn stash and other things that have just fallen. My temperature blanket, what are you doing here? Get out, get out of the way. Oh my gosh, I've got fabric. I've got whips back there. This, this is what we're going to deal with today. This is what needs to be dealt with. I mean, it doesn't look horrible, but it's not great. This, are you kidding me? Come on, what was I thinking? I just have things and stuff and all these are full of random skeins and this is just scraps or whatever and we need to deal with this today. This needs dealt with. I cannot wait to get this nice and organized. I feel like I'm officially at that point in my yarn stash organization where it is not motivating me at all. It's actually really overwhelming me. I hate being around it. And I usually love being around my yarn, but I just, oh, it just stresses me out because I feel like it's more what's happening in these bins. Like, okay, you know, like, okay, cute, whatever. This inspires me. But this, I'm like, what do I do with you? I am so lost. I don't even remember what this yarn is. I don't even remember where I got it. I don't even remember anything about anything over here. And I just want to get it organized. I just want to make it pretty again. I want to feel inspired by my yarn stash again. I don't know. Are you with me? I feel like after this crazy busy season in my business, I just threw things over here. I'm like, whatever, I'll deal with it later. It is now later and we are now dealing with it in today's video. It is now the new year. So I feel like it's the perfect time to just get a fresh new start as far as my yarn stash goes and just feeling really organized in my business in general. So my first thing that I'm trying to do to kind of just feel organized again is get my yarn under control. So that is what we're going to be doing in today's video. And don't even worry because if you're feeling a little overwhelmed as well, I'm sharing all my tips that I have or because, you know, I have done this before. I have had to go through and organize all my yarn. I've learned a lot about how to organize yarn and how to actually keep it organized, which obviously I didn't do, but I promise you I have so many tips for this that I'm going to be sharing with you in today's video. So I cannot wait to share those and just get inspired together. I want to invite you to gather all of your yarn and organize with me in today's video. Let's do it together. Let's just get control over our yarn stash again. I mean, it's just been, it's time. It's time, right? It's time to get control over our yarn stash, get inspired by it again, and not just feel completely overwhelmed. But before we do that, I think we need to make a chai latte. I think we need a little, a little inspiration, a little motivation, a little energy before we dive in and deal with this insane mess. So let's go make a chai latte and then we are going to organize in today's video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I cannot wait to see what the yarn wall looks like now versus what it looks like later when we get it all organized and all pretty. welcome you if you are new to my channel. My name is Cameron and I run my own crochet boutique. It's called Cameron's Cute Creations. I started it back in 2019. Honestly, I don't talk about it very often, but I did not think my business was really going to go anywhere in 2019. Like I honestly just kind of created an Etsy on a whim and I thought, oh, I'm going to graduate. I'm going to go get a real job, whatever that means. You know, go work at a graphic design firm. I'm never going to, you know, crochet maybe for fun or whatever. No. What ended up happening is I did a craft show. I realized I was obsessed with crocheting. So after starting my business in 2019, I grew up primarily selling at craft shows. So that is what I love to talk about and teach about on my YouTube channel because I just think it's so much fun. I feel like there's not enough content out there that talks about selling at craft shows. Selling at craft shows is the number one reason why I was able to go full time in my business. And it's just not, it's not talked about enough. So I'm over here talking about it and I got crochet friends like you hanging out and we just, we have a lot of fun here on the channel. So if you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe and just, you know, hang out here. I always just feel like I'm hugging on here and hanging out with my best friends. And it makes me so much more motivated to do things like today, going through and organizing all my yarn. So I just want to thank you for being here. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. I actually ordered 
something to help us today. I actually designed a freebie for you. It's gonna be linked in the description. I'll chat more about it here in a minute, but I'm super excited. Today's gonna be good. Today's gonna be good. We're going to get organized. I just love the feeling of getting organized, not only my business, but my life as well. The other day I went through and I sorted out my wallet. What? What is up with like sorting things? It's just so satisfying. I don't know if that's just me. I love things being organized. I'm pretty bad at keeping things organized. I'm trying to get better. Goal for 2024. Keep things a little more organized after I go through and organize everything. <laughs> Best chai ever. Okay, I am ready. Are you ready? Let's go get organized. Cheers. Will you be helping us today with your organizing skills? The first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna gather all of my yarn in one place. I keep thinking, where do I wanna do this? I feel like I have more room out here, but the yarn is going to end up going back in the craft room. You know what? I think out here it might be the move. I need the space. I do do this when my yarn stash starts getting so big that it starts outgrowing my designated space for it, my craft room. I hoard it in other areas of our place, like the living room. And I know my yarn stash is bad. When Peyton and I sit down to watch a movie and he goes, where do you want me to sit? Because the whole couch is just covered with yarn and covered with crochet projects. I don't know, I don't know about you, I don't know if you relate to this, but it just starts taking over my whole house. So I think the first thing we need to do is gather it all in one place, take inventory and see what I actually have. I'm gonna lay it all out in here. There was yarn in here yesterday and I did move it because Peyton and I watched a movie we watch sing the movie sing it's really cute but that's why there's no yarn in here now but now i'm gonna bring it all back out here when Peyton gets home today he's probably gonna be like what happened <laughs> hopefully we'll be done and organized by then and he will never know that it happened <laughs> okay let's do it I'm gonna start by just carrying these out there and then I am gonna figure out the rest later. But let's let's just grab these for now, bring them out to the living room so we can lay it all out and see what we have. Stop judging me. It's been worse. This is not all of it. <laughs> You know what? This does not feel crazy. I mean, it feels kind of manageable. I thought there was going to be more. Turns out most of my yarn was in the same place, which is good, which is really good because I was a little worried there for a sec. Still a lot, still a lot, especially since these are tangled messes that are going to take forever to get through, but don't worry, we're going to make it all pretty. We're going to get through it. I'm going to show you some of my hacks. I, in one of these, I think in this one, down here somewhere, I feel it. <laughs> Come on. This is my yarn winder, which I am going to use to wind up some skeins of yarn. Oh my goodness, if I could edit it. This is a disaster. Okay, are we good? Almost. Okay, it is free. That is my yarn winder. I use that to make the little... They're gonna look like this. It's like winding your own cakes. Oh, here's one I did with my yarn winder. So that is what I'm gonna end up doing with the leftover partially used skeins of yarn. What I'm gonna start with is these perfectly perfect, pretty big skeins of yarn. And these skeins, I'm actually just gonna put right back where I have them, <laughs> to be honest, and get them out of our way because we don't really need to do anything with them. And when we get to like the color, coordination, and all the things making the yarn wall pretty, we will look at them again. But for right now, the ones that look like this, I like how they look in the little cubbies and they're not even used at all. So I'm just gonna go do that really quick, get them out of our way so that we can actually focus on things like this. Here are the ones that I decided are good to go. They're fine. They don't need to be caked. They haven't been used. And I think they look really cute, like in little cubbies like this. These ones I'm kind of like iffy about. I don't know, because I saw somebody do pegboards with all their caked yarn on them. And I'm thinking, oh, I could have all these down here and all the caked stuff all beautiful up here. So I don't know. I end up not knowing what to do with those yet, but these ones are probably just gonna stay here. And let's go check out 
out the rest of the yarn. This is a brand new skein, but am I gonna sound crazy? I don't have anything like it, and I feel like it doesn't look very good in my yarn wall. <laughs> I like it looking aesthetically pleasing too. I promise you, I like it being functional and aesthetic. Like both of those are really important to me. So I don't know. I don't know. Like skeins like this, I only have a couple of them and I'm thinking about caking them just to make all of this just really consistent. But I'm like, do I want to cake all of this? I'm not really sure yet. So I think I'm going to start with the ones that I obviously need to cake, like things like this. But other than that, um, these I'm probably going to set aside until I decide what I want to do with them. Yeah, I think we're going to start caking some of these and just start organizing through some of these so I get a little bit more organized because right now I'm just a little overwhelmed and uh yeah I want to make it way better than this I'm gonna bring in a little basket of yarn and start start winding hopefully we can get through a few of these little baskets before lunch and just feel a little bit more organized just get, get the ball rolling you know what I'm saying because they, uh, they're not perfect. But I will say, Taylor from Bags by Bento made an Instagram post and I saved it for the next time I brought out my yarn winder. I'm gonna read some of the tips that she shared. It's so good, it's so good. She did this cute little graphic and everything. I follow her tips, but I haven't read this in a, in a minute. Number one is detangle. If you do most of the de detangling beforehand, it will help with the yarn winding process. Okay, actually, that's a really good reminder. I didn't do that. I had to detangle as I was winding, which is never fun. So that's a really good reminder. Two is position. Try to wind at the wrong angle it was making my cakes turn out lopsided. The yarn winder lever should be directly in front of you and the yarn threader to the left of the winder. I think I may, I think I may need to redo mine here. This is supposed to be to the, oh, supposed to be here or there. I don't think that's gonna work. I don't think that's gonna work because it's gonna go like, okay, I'm gonna keep mine like this. I don't know if I'm doing the right way, but this is how I've always done it. <laughs> Let's try it on this little baby skein winder. Wait a second. Is this how I'm supposed to do it? Note to self, the tiny, tiny ones. I don't think I'll be able to cake them. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be here. That's what Taylor said in her post. Swift isn't secured, but is super helpful for yarn hang. What's a Swift? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Okay, it's not required. Make sure to secure the yarn in the winder and threader properly before starting. I wasn't pushing the yarn far enough down in the center and it was falling off midway. Okay, definitely want to do that. So tension. This was a tip I got the most. It massively helps if you pull the yarn as it feeds into the winder. It makes the cake nice and tight. Okay, I definitely wanna start doing that, making tighter cakes. So excited. Wind, now it's time to wind them up. Finding a nice rhythm that isn't too fast or slow is the key. If it's too fast, then you risk yarn wrapping below or above the winder. If you're going super slow the whole time, then the cake might be loose. Label. Adding a tag or label to your yarn cake with the brand, color, and any other information needed can save you the headache of trying to figure out later. Okay, Taylor, I'm so glad you included that because I actually designed a yarn label that we are going to attach to all of these little leftover skeins. So the ones that I remember, like I remember this is the Hue and Me, I will have to look up the color. I'm gonna tag everything with my new yarn label after we're done caking everything so that we can actually stay organized and we don't have to just guess on what things are all the time. So I actually printed out a bunch of yarn labels that you can just print and cut them from home. I was feeling like extra, extra nice. So I was like, you know what? If you're hanging out with me and you're watching this video, I'm gonna give you this for free too. So if you wanna check out the description box, you can download your own free yarn labels. I included all the information that you would need to know. So that's what we're gonna end up doing after we cake all of these. So 
I'm gonna use Taylor's tips, start caking, and then we're going to label all of them and make it all pretty. Oh, I'm so excited to make it all consistent. And, and I'm glad Taylor mentioned that to label your yarn after you do this, because I've done this before and I didn't label my yarn and I kind of regret not labeling it. Let's just cake because there's a lot more we gotta cover, but first we got we gotta cake. Like that's the first step. I think I may be procrastinating caking all this yarn. Let's cake and then we'll chat, okay? Are you good with that? Okay, let's do it. this is actually possible but my craft room has got messier the last couple days now the last time we chatted I was starting to wind my skeins wind my balls of yarn I haven't got through all of them yet I still have quite a bit left actually I'll give you a little look I did about this many those are all those are all cakes those are all ready but I've got a lot, a lot more to do. So it is now Monday. I did a little bit more winding on Saturday. Sunday, I took it easy. It was New Year's Eve. Peyton and I kind of had a chill day around the house. And now today, I am really determined to get through this. Like, I am so ready. I got myself a chai tea latte. That always motivates me. I also wrote down this quote earlier and I keep rereading it because it's just motivating me to get organized. It's a Benjamin Franklin quote and it's for every minute spent organizing, an hour is earned. So I keep telling myself that. I'm like, okay, as long as I'm organizing, I am being productive. Going through and organizing all of this stuff is gonna save me so much time in the future, especially when I go to start a new project and just feeling better and more confident in my business in general. So I kind of ran out of my chai powder. So this is kind of like, it's not as strong. It's still good. It's still good. It's just not as like chai like, you know, it's more oat milky, which is okay. Not complaining about it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to give you a little look about uh, where we're at right now. The goals for today. Hopefully we'll be able to get through at least winding all of this today. I do have some more things that I'm excited to show you about how to figure out the actual size of yarn. So say you forgot what this was, you don't know what weight it is. I got a tool that helps out with that. And then I also have yarn labels that we're going to organize everything with. But first we've got to wind up all the yarn. So we're going to do that right now. <laughs> also got a tripod finally for my new camera. So uh, that came in the mail yesterday or maybe two days ago. I don't know. I just unboxed it. And so I have you on this tripod. So we might get some cooler angles. Anyways, just kind of, kind of exciting stuff here. Just upgrading, slowly upgrading. Ooh, I should probably take off my smartwatch. I'm trying to count my steps for the new year and it's going to definitely get messed up with all of this. All right, let's do it. This is the podcast that I was listening to while I was curling my hair this morning. It is a Jasmine Star podcast. She has the Jasmine Star show. She's incredible. She pretty much motivated me to do so many things in my business. I love her so much, but I'm listening to this podcast, which is called Overcoming Work Addiction and Remaining a Successful Entrepreneur because, oh my gosh, I feel like 2023 I worked too much and I love to work. Don't get me wrong. I love it, but I definitely want more time like the whole reason I started my business is to have more time freedom and do more things with my family and friends and sometimes I feel like I say no to those things because I'm a little addicted to working I'm not gonna lie about it Peyton edits my videos and he's probably sitting here watching this like yep yep you are so anyways I am going to finish that podcast I think I have like about half an hour left on it so I'm gonna play that and wind some yarn and then we'll touch base and see how the progress is going <laughs>
but it's only been half an hour, so I am going to start getting through this one and this one, which honestly, I don't know. I don't think it's gonna take too long, but I will definitely keep you updated. For ones that had a label with them, I'm just setting them on top so I can remember that and transfer it to my new labels that I'm gonna use for all of these. The ones that don't have a label, I'm gonna show you in a little bit how we're gonna determine what type of yarn, the weight of yarn it is, and then label those. But anyways, this is a little update. Let's keep winding. for about, I don't even know, two or three hours. So I'm gonna take a little break, actually give my wrists and my hands a little break and eat something because I feel like I'm kind of dragging right now. But I wanted to show you, whoa, these are all of my little cakes. So, well, some of them are really little, some of them are a little bit bigger. So this is what we're gonna go through and end up organizing. But I do have, I mean, probably about, I'd say like, three or four more of these baskets to get through. Some of them are just a disaster, which a lot of this is whips or really scrappy yarn. I won't need to wind all of it, but anyway, so I've got this many so far. I'm gonna work on after eating, doing the rest of them that I have over here. And then we're gonna move on to organizing them. And oh my gosh, it actually feels doable though. I feel like I'm past the point where it's feeling super overwhelming. And now that I've got the bulk of these cakes done, I'm feeling pretty good. So we are gonna eat something and we will touch base here in a minute. This is why I never vlog <laughs> the food that I make because um, this is just random food I threw together. Uh, Peyton is also here with me, so we're gonna eat lunch. He's still on his break as he works at a school, so he's still on his break from Christmas. So we're gonna eat this. I don't even know what you wanna call it. We got some tomatoes, some sausage, some pesto, some noodles, some Parmesan. That is what we're gonna have for lunch. And then we are gonna get back to organizing the yarn room. this 
this situation over here, but you know what? I'm feeling pretty good because we got most of the work done and actually my yarn stash is already starting to inspire me again. I know what you're thinking. Like it is not organized quite yet, but I will say I was over here yesterday and before bed, I grabbed some of these skeins and I started working on pumpkins. So it has inspired me a little bit. It's already sparked a little bit of inspiration. What the plan is for today is I want to finish it. I just need to get this done at this point. Winding the yarn took a lot longer than I thought, but I'm so glad it's done because oh, it's going to be so pretty and so organized. So the plan. So I actually have these yarn labels that I printed. I have a free template for you, by the way, if you want to use the same yarn labels that I'm using in this video. I designed these and they're free. So you can go grab them in the description box if that interests you when you're organizing your stash as well. Yeah, I'm gonna cut these up. Another thing that I got, where did it go? It's such a mess in here. Where is it? Okay, it's, you know, under yarn, no big deal. I got this to stamp the corners of it. It cuts the corner, so it's more round because I was a little worried about the edges snagging on like the edge of the, where am I? <laughs> what am I doing here? Here, this is an example. I stamped the edges to make them around so they don't snag on my yarn. So I'm gonna do that on all of them as well. I actually think Peyton might help me. The last couple of weeks he's had it off because he works at a school and they've been off for Christmas break. So he's been helping me out so much. So I think that's what we're gonna work on is cutting these and doing the little corners to get them all ready because then we're going to label all of this yarn here. I'll give you a little tour of what it looks like right Right now and kind of explain my thought process here. Let me show you. So all of these cakes are not labeled. <laughs> Some of them have a label that goes with it, but I'm gonna make my own label and just put that information on there and attach those. But yarn, like for example, little bits like this, I'm not gonna label, cause first of all, I know exactly what yarn this is <laughs> because I use it all the time. But also it's just not really worth labeling. So it's just a teeny tiny bit left. So the ones I'm gonna label are obviously the ones I know the information about, like this one here and ones that I wanna know the weight of like this one here would be really great to know what the weight is which I'm going to show you how to do that as well that's kind of the idea I have for all of this now as far as oh yeah by the way temperature blanket yarn is all caked and organized so all of this in here was scrap yarn that I felt like couldn't be used for a project like there was not enough in here to be used for a project maybe my little keychains like that was the only thing I could think of for these I don't even think I could get a baby headband like come on like there's there's barely any left. So this is scrap yarn I think I could use for small projects, but nothing that big. And so I didn't actually cake these because they're too tiny to cake and they don't really hold up if you cake them. That's what I did with that yarn. This yarn goes in here. It's temperature blanket yarn. This is scraps that like this type of thing where it's like, okay, I obviously can't do a project with this, but I also refuse to throw it away. So I actually incorporate this in with my polyfill stuff. Thing. I don't waste this scrap yarn. So here's a bunch of the ends from the 2023 temperature blanket I just finished up. So this is all going to be incorporated into stuffing. This I'll figure out some smaller projects to use on them. And then this is the yarn that I can actually use for things. And then this is yarn that is fine. Like it, it doesn't need to be tagged. It doesn't really need to be touched. I mean, I think I'm going to tuck in some of these stranglers here, but other than that, this yarn is good to go. And I also found some whips. This is kind of like my whip pile right now, which is not all of it. I'm kind of embarrassed to show you. I'll show you, I guess. This and this and this. Pretty much all of this is filled with stuff to work on. Anyways, uh, maybe that'll be a different video where I go through and organize all my whips. Comment down below if that interests you. I definitely need to do it. And I could definitely use some accountability buddies. So if you want that in the next vlog, let me know. <laughs> but anyways, let's go. So we're gonna cut these out. We're gonna round the corners with this little tool. By the way, I got this off Amazon. It was really cheap. It's really cute because it's pink. <laughs> and it also works really well because I tried it on a couple for practice. That is what we're gonna do. And then we're going to tag some of these here and then we're gonna start oh we're gonna start organizing okay i'm so excited so i know i have one of those paper cutters somewhere but you know the ones that you can go like i don't know I don't know where it's at right now, to be honest. Another reason I need to clean this room and get it all organized. So don't even worry because I think I'm gonna make this type of video series on my channel where I 
go through and organize this entire room. Anyways, right now we're just keeping keeping our eye on the prize. We're keeping focused here. I am going to cut my yarn labels here with just an X-Acto knife to keep the lines straight. So that is what I'm gonna do here about there-ish. Do you like how everything is pink? <laughs> I'm gonna cut these this way with my scissors. I'm just gonna try to be really straight about it. This would be a lot easier if I could find my paper cutter, but anyways. Okay, that's pretty good. So here is what the yarn labels look like before I get the little corners. The only reason I'm really doing the corner part, which honestly I might start doing on my tags as well, is because once in a while the corners will snag on certain types of yarn. It's kind of a lot of work stamping all of these. It's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be worth it, I promise. <laughs> it's gonna be so aesthetic. I hope that I can actually do this corner. Let's see, there we go. So I just put it in there. Oh, that one looks bad. No. So that's what it looks like with its rounded corners. What I think I'm gonna do is actually do like a little hole punch here in the upper right corner. Let's see if I can find a hole punch. <laughs> okay, I did find a hole punch. And what I'm gonna do is just hole punch the upper right corner because that is what I'm gonna do. I think I have a bigger hole punch too. So I'm gonna get that out for the bigger yarn. You have some options here. You can either add a small swatch of your yarn to here and just have this as like a ref reference, or you can attach this to the actual cake. That's probably what I'm gonna do just to keep it all together like that. But I just wanted to go over what information you'll want to put on your yarn. And of course, if you don't remember some of this stuff, it's all good. Just put on there what you remember. But I have the name. So the name of the yarn you're using, the brand that you got it from, the color. So whatever specific color you have, uh, the name of it there, the dye lot. That is, if you remember, Member, or you have the label still, or you care about the dye lot, you can put that number there. The fiber is pretty important to know if you do remember it or you still have the label and want to put that there. Then you can circle what hook you want to use. If the hook size that you need to use for it isn't on here, then you can always just write it right there. But I put the most common ones on here. And then as far as weight, that is the weight of your yarn, you can just circle that as well, which is so nice, so convenient. You don't have to just write it all out every time. I mean, this stuff, it makes sense to write out, but this, you just circle really, really quick. So I'm hoping we can get through this pretty quick. I got it kind of down to a system here. I'm gonna continue cutting more of these out and then doing the corners. And then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna attach them and another really cool trick. So I'm gonna show you here in a minute. But again, if you want these, they're free. So just go download them down below in the description box and then you can print them out at home and you can literally just start using them right now like I am. So anyways, super excited to have these done and super excited to have them as a freebie for you. Let's move on to making more of them. ready to go and I'm thinking about going through and labeling the ones that I'm not sure about like this one I honestly don't remember where I got it or any of the details but I want to put what the weight is and what hook size I think I could use with it that way when I'm doing a project and I'm looking for my yarn I will see it I'll see it on there now I will say little skeins like this of my velvet I'm not gonna label because I know I know what this is. I know the color. This is vapor gray. This is brunette velvet. This is my go-to. Like I use this all the time and there's a lot of them. And I just feel like it's not a good use of my time to label the ones that I already know what they are. But if you have your labels and you want to label everything, which honestly I may end up doing for the sake of this video,
video and trying to get this done. I'm not gonna label everything, but uh, perfectionist me is like, mm. when I think of, okay, what's actually practical and what actually makes the most sense for me and my business is labeling the ones like this skein. I have no idea where this came from. I don't know what the brand is. And also the skeins that I had partially used, but it still had the label and I still do have all the information. And now I just wanna transfer the information on here, but not hold on to this huge label that doesn't fit. I mean, like, it barely almost would, but it doesn't fit anymore. So that is what I'm gonna use the yarn labels for. So what I wanna show you is something that I got on Amazon. I saw actually Taylor from Bags by Bento. I feel like this whole video, I keep bringing her up, but she's amazing. She shares so many tips, so, so helpful. And I found these on Amazon. So it is a yarn gauge WPI tool. Now WPI, stands for wraps per inch, I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure that's what that stands for. But I got these off Amazon and it also has like these to put your hooks through to see what size if you forgot and it wore off or whatever. It came with two of those and two of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep a set of both of these at home in my craft room and then a set in my yarn bag so that I can have it when I'm on the go, which is super nice. Anyways, the one I'm gonna be using in today's video is the W. WPI tool. This is yarn gauge WPI tool. So we have different types of yarn. Obviously, like there's the different types of like there's bulky, there's uh worsted, all of those different things. And this is gonna let us know right here so that we can label it right here. What I'm gonna do is try it out <laughs> with this yarn right here. We're supposed to wrap around right here and see how many times it wraps around, and then it'll let us know what weight it is down here, which is amazing. Where has this been? my whole life. I feel like I've needed this thing so many different times with skeins like this that I don't remember where they came from. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it around. That's seven. That's seven wraps, which is bulky, which this does actually look bulky. Does this look like bulky yarn? I feel like this could be an in-between. I feel like this is bulky because what is, what is wool ease? I'm pretty sure wool ease is bulky. I need to do some research because this is feeling like a similar weight to wool ease. I don't know. It could be the one below it. It could be six wraps too. I'm going to compare it to wool ease just to double check and make sure that we're doing this right. Alice, come here. No, Joanne's is <laughs> giving me all these coupons. Oh, I just got a yarn weight conversion chart pulled up on my phone. This is actually really helpful. All these numbers are confusing me. Okay, I got this. I got this. It has wraps per inch. I had about seven and it says six to nine is bulky, which equals chunky, which is a weight five. The wool is thick and quick. It's a weight six, which actually kind of makes sense because this feels like a tiny bit lighter weight. So I pretty sure this is a weight five yarn. Sorry about that. That was just me overthinking a bunch of different things. It looks like this thing does actually work really well. Maybe you look at this and you know what's going on. For me, this conversion chart is helping. So maybe I'll link this in the description box for you as well so you can refer to this chart. It's letting me know how many wraps per inch is what type of weight. And then it also lets me know the hook sizes to use with it, which is so, so helpful. So what I'm gonna do is use this conversion chart, use the wraps per inch tool. And it looks like you can lay the yarn across and kind of see what it looks like as well. I feel like I'm gonna try that with bulky. See, I think it. I think it's a weight five. We'll see if I start a project and I get that completely wrong. I think some of these other ones I'm gonna have an easier time with, especially if I uh, get the hang of this. <laughs> but anyways, okay, I am gonna go through and start tagging these. For the ones I don't remember, I'm just gonna leave those blank and I'm going to circle the weight that this thing is telling me it is. And then on this chart, it says that a weight five is hook size can be 6.5 to nine millimeter. What I'm gonna do is kind of circle all of those because it's really just going to depend on the yarn and since I don't know all the information on this yarn I'm just doing this to kind of give me a general idea of what I should use on it and the ones where I actually have the yarn label like this one here the velvet yarn it has all that information on there and I'm just going to be transferring all of this information to a tag I'll show you that in a second here but first I am just going to take this and I'm going to just thread it through just wrap this around wrap this 
through and tuck in that tail and then there you go it's your label yarn oh my gosh wait this is actually so cute i'm obsessed with these little tags some of them you'll have all the information some of them you'll have part of the information on there we're just doing the best we can with what we got that is how i'm going to tag some of these skeins that i just I don't know where it came from, but the ones that I do have the label, I'm just gonna transfer over. So let's do that here on the next one. Also, there's certain ones like this that I know is from Bernat. I just gotta go look up the color name and that will be super easy to do really quick as well. The next one I'm gonna do is this because I already have the label for it. So it looks like the name is Lux Velvor Sparkle. 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 Brand is Juicy Couture. And the color, free love, dye lot number, JF230002A, fiber, 98% polyester, and 2% metallic. <laughs> that must be the sparkles. 6.5 millimeter, and the weight is a 5. It's a chunky yarn. I got that all good to go. I'm going to take my little, I'm going to thread through my tag, wrap it around. And oh my gosh, I love the feeling of getting organized. It feels so good. By the way, I forget if I mentioned this, I did print all of these on cardstock because I felt like it would be a little bit more strong to hold the labels together a little bit longer because you know, I like to keep things in my stash for a really long time. There we go. It's all done. So cute. I love it. This is gonna work so, so well. So I'm gonna keep doing these and we'll touch base here in a minute. So I've tagged pretty much all of my little cakes of yarn. I have this last one to tag. I'm gonna show you what I've been doing because I haven't been doing the whole Whole punch type of deal I'll show you so I have this skein already here so I'm just gonna copy over the information really quick I love this yarn it's so soft I made bandanas for my friends for Christmas they're so cute so this is what the information looks like when I transfer it to one of my little tags it's so so cute I love it being consistent and organized like this to be honest could you Write it on a piece of paper. Yes, you could write this information every time on a piece of paper. But what I love the most about my tags is that you can just circle these things down here really quickly. It's cute. It's branded. It makes everything consistent. I love that. I love that in my business. I love feeling like I'm a little bit more put together. I know what's going on. My yarn is all organized, you know. So I am going to take this little cake, which this is not one of my best cakes. What I'm going to do is some of these that I wrapped around at the end, I'm just going to like tuck this under a couple strands. This is what I've been doing to save time. I actually kind of like it better because it kind of keeps the tag just on there a little bit better. That is what I've been doing. So I already started putting some of my yarn up here. I need to organize on top of here too. We're gonna make it all pretty. We're gonna go and we're gonna organize it all pretty. Down here in these little baskets, I'm putting skeins and you're gonna laugh at me. You're gonna know they're the colors that I don't like aesthetically as much. Like they don't look as pretty out. So I put those ones in here. Or skeins that I just felt looked like kind of awkward out. Like I put the pretty ones out. I just like that. Okay, but organize your yarn however you want, you know? So be able to do it by color. I am doing it by color uh, in these and in my cup. I know other makers that like to do it by weight of yarn, which honestly probably makes the most sense, but aesthetics? I'm all about the aesthetics, and this has never been an issue for me. I have been able to find the yarn that I need really well, and I'm actually kind of doing something a little bit different this time as I put away my yarn. So I do have some full skeins that are out here, but I also have a lot of these partially used skeins, and I usually don't put them out here, but I don't have a ton of these full skeins right now. You know, I'm hoping that by putting some of these out here, it will motivate me to work on them and get through them so I can stock up on some more uh, full-size skeins. So anyways, these baskets are full of different colors. That is what is in my baskets and then in my cubbies over here I've got all sorts of different types of things and I'll, I'll go through and show you up here is kind of messy and I've got a lot of stuff going on so I think I'm gonna start by cleaning up up here and then we are going to finish organizing my yarn and making it all pretty oh my gosh ah, it feels so good to get this done. It has taken me three full days. If you're wondering how many hours I spent doing this, probably like six or seven hours. 
I know this video is not gonna be that long. I'm cutting a lot of it out and I was caking a bunch, a bunch of yarn over and over again. And I was like, I'm not including all of this in the vlog because you're gonna get real bored if I just included all of that. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. I mean, it was kind of fun. I do like winding yarn, but it was a lot of it. I feel really good that it's done. I'm really excited to get it all set up and all pretty. Let's do it. And then I'll show you the final look at my yarn stash. I'm actually kind of surprised because I felt like I didn't have as much as I thought I did. It's probably a good thing because that means I want to I want to try to get through some of this before I buy new yarn I'm setting you up here on my tripod You can get a better look at what I'm doing here. How are you feeling up there? You know, you're making me a little nervous there There we go. We're gonna finish organizing all this I'm gonna start by kind of clearing off some of this stuff on the top and then we're gonna put it back and organize it all oh, pretty I had no room to work this morning on my computer and I literally set up my laptop up there so I'm looking forward to having my tables back and them not being taken over by yarn anymore. seen my other yarn organizing videos or seen my yarn wall in the back of other videos. This is pretty sparse for me and I'm actually really happy with it. I do have a lot of small half use skeins that I did cake up and it looks really good but I do want to get through. I want to use these you know before I go and, and invest in some more like this and then I really just want to fill up this whole wall with like full skeins like this because in my opinion this is like the prettiest section when they're like this and then over here it's cute but it's, it's just not as pretty as like this it's just so clean so anyways i threw some of my skeins up here i guess i'll just give you a little walk through and show you look this is a sign that i need more yarn right re-empty come on i need more yarn <laughs> But the first one here, this is some yarn that was sent to me and some colors that, I mean, this just didn't, it just looks kind of like, I don't use it very often. This is one that I got for a specific project and it just doesn't really match up here. Part of this has a reason. Part of this is aesthetics, <laughs> just being honest with you. But this is what that first one looks like. This is a yarn I got for a specific project and I just feel like it didn't really go with the vibe up here. This is just a brand new skein. This is a brand new skein. Here's some yellow that I used for bees. I don't know why. Like some of this, it might not make sense to you, but this just like made sense to me to keep all of these together in this one. We're moving on to some more bright colors that I don't normally work with for my business, but I do work on personal projects more or gifts. And so I kept all of these yarns in this little basket down here. These are from Furls. I really love their yarn. It's really, really soft and it's really pretty. These are from Persian. What is it called? Persianers? And then this brand of yarn is where I have pretty much all of this, except this is the Juicy Couture yarn. Again, this is so pretty and I love it so much, but like, it's just too vibrant to like be out here in my little peaceful yarn wall craft room situation. I still love it. I still want to work with it. It's not like I shoved the ones down here I didn't want to work with. Like, I love these. And honestly, these I think I could cake up and then just throw up here as well, but I just didn't like that it wasn't consistent 
because these are caked and these aren't. And I just don't have time right now to cake all of these. So maybe that's something I end up doing or I'll just use them right out of here. But that is what that situation is looking like. Also, once in a while, you'll just need a little bit of yellow or a little bit of green. It's just something that I don't use so often in my business that I wanted to keep it out here to spark inspiration. Like this is just more stuff that I'll need every once in a while, I guess. So down here, this is my little, look at this cute little skein from Crochet Pink Pumpkin. She sent me a crew neck and then she sent me this tiny little skein of yarn it's so cute so I put that down here with my little tiny uh, yarn ball collection. So this one is a little bit bigger. You might be like, why is this one down here? This is the chunkier fur yarn and I could not for the life of me get this to spin on my yarn winder. So anyways, it lives in here <laughs> with all of these teeny tiny balls of yarn. And then down here is my scrappy pieces that I can put in with my stuffing. So no yarn goes to waste. When there's just like a teeny tiny bit of yarn left like this, it's just... Nothing really much to do with it. So I put them in here and I use it for stuffing. If we are looking at it from this angle here, we will start, I guess on this side, because we got three blank spots. They're ready. They're ready for more yarn. Up here, I have some of my Bernat Forever fleece. I make blankets with this yarn. I actually have a pattern on my website that I love to use and sell at my craft shows. So I got four skeins of this color. It is rose hip and it is so beautiful. The next skeins of yarn that I have down here. Joanne's actually sent these to me. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you saw, I, I unboxed it on Instagram live and I shared a video of me unboxing it. I was totally fangirling. I cannot believe Joanne sent me things, but they sent me these. They sent me some other yarn as well, but these are ones that I use all the time in my business anyway. So I put them out here. It's so, so pretty. You ever like have yarn that's so pretty you don't even really want to use it. You're just like, I just want to look at it. <laughs> but anyways, I love I love this yarn and I'm definitely going to use it because I make the little baby bear hats with these and they're one of my best sellers. So definitely gonna end up making some of those for my upcoming shows. This is yarn I've had forever. This is Walmart brand and you can actually get this for a pretty good deal and make those chunky blankets with it. So definitely recommend looking into this yarn. You do need quite a few skeins to make them. Those chunky blankets get pretty expensive, but it's one of the most affordable ways that I found to make those chunky blankets. So I only have one skein left because I made a chunky blanket and then there was one left. So anyways, it's down here. Maybe I can come up with a fun project, maybe some like really chunky pumpkins or something next year. This is also just an extra skein I had from working on a blanket like literally years ago. If you've watched any of my videos, I mean, these ones are just been here. I just, I need to either get more yarn to go with it or just come up with a small project to get through these. But let's move on to the right here. We've got kind of my green blue ish section. It's more green, I suppose. This is some of my yarn that I added the labels to so that I can refer back to it. This yarn is my first ever premiere yarn that I tried. I actually got this sent to me by Mama Made Minis and I made a really, really cute frog or toad, I think it is actually for my friend because she loves frogs. But anyways, I love this green. I still have a bit left. I think I could probably get part of another lovey or something, you know, like a little animal out of that. And then up here, we've got the Bernat Plus yarn from Yarn Inspirations. So soft. I've made blankets out of these before. I'm also thinking about doing little baby bear hats with this because I feel like it'd be so soft and so cozy. Up here, I have some big twists. That is Joanne's brand. It's the soft yarn. And I have just four skeins of it in brown. I've had this for quite a while because when I was thinking about teaching crochet lessons, which I'm not really opposed to, I just haven't really had the time for it recently. Uh, when I do teach crochet lessons, this is the yarn that I gravitate towards to teaching beginners. And so I bought so many skeins of it, like a couple years ago. And now I'm just trying to get through it because honestly, I just have so much of it. And in the future, I'm just gonna buy skeins as I need it as I teach classes. I am gonna try to make some beanies on my Addy machine. The Addy machine actually works really well with the Big Twist soft yarn. So little hack for you. If you like Joanne's yarn like me, uh, check out that yarn for your knitting machines because they make really soft and really cute beanies. Moving on to our next sections here. So this is my blue and kind of green colors. There's kind of a mixture of different textures and types. And you know, 
some of this stuff, like this, I don't really know what I'm going to do with it yet, to be honest. But like this yarn, I make little baby booties. This is, uh, again, the Forever Fleece, which is also what's down below here, but in a different color. And I make little baby booties, again, the blankets. But with that yarn, I'll make hats or booties. Um, This I will end up making blankets with. So I've got four skeins of this color. It's so pretty. It's like a gray, but almost has like a almost blue tone to it. But it's gray. It's gray, I think. <laughs> um, And then, so down here, I have more of my gray tones and I also have some little skeins of velvet which you might be like what are you gonna make with this I can definitely make keychains but I'm actually thinking of making little baby headbands with it as well pattern will be coming out soon hint 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 I already have my beanie pattern out but velvet one has been highly requested I just need to write it up next section over here I have some of my pinks I've also got this like really pretty maroon color as well uh, I just thought these sections they're like really pretty Pretty obviously my favorite because I'm obsessed with pink but I also just feel like I need to get through some of this yarn and so I like that it's out this is the actually the soft yarn the same brand as that and it's just a pink color and this is really great yarn to put through my adding machine and make beanies so that's what I'm gonna do with that I've got fluffy yarn to make more scrunchies with I've also done the fluffy chickens with this yarn mostly this yarn though like not the pink but anyways scrunchies will be super cute up here we've got this yarn which is from Michaels I believe it's the loops and threads brand I forget what the actual name is but I've been making the little baby bear hats with it some more Addy knitting machine yarn over here we've got my more browns and neutrals I did the little noses on my snowman with this yarn back here but I like to have some neutrals and this yarn I use for my chickens as well so that's what I have up here that stuff that I thought looked pretty out and I could grab easily. Down here is my whites and some of these I just I don't even know really where they came from but these are worsted weight. I can just tell by looking at them maybe not this one down here but I tagged the ones that I was a little bit more sure of and I may go back and end up tagging more of these with the uh the weight but honestly <laughs> I feel like I'm getting a little sick right now and I just had to finish up what I could and I know it's not perfect but this is the best I could do this is me telling myself that because I am a perfectionist but this is the the white section here and then we have the blacks now I usually don't use a lot of black in my business like look at this look how bright and, and then it's like you know it's just like so dark down here it's like in the dark corner too I will say that black stuff does sell well I don't sell a ton of it just because it doesn't really match my aesthetic it will sell well like if you do headbands with it and so I do have a lot of this velvet I mostly do gifts with it and then I also have like this is really great it's just a worsted weight yarn I believe this is the Hobby Lobby I love this yarn in black and I use it to embroider eyes I have some blanket yarn some black blanket yarn that's good for the bees this is some black wool east thick and quick that I got years ago to make a custom order and I just have a bunch of it but it can work for just little embroidered pieces so I have all of that down here honestly and when I fill up all of these a bit more this is gonna be the first thing to go in one of these just because it doesn't really match but whatever it's back here in this corner and honestly as far as functionality goes it probably is smart to keep some of this out in order to access it when I need to do embroidered eyes or when I do need to work with these colors I just like the bright and really soft tones and even the grays I'm like oh, it's too dark no I actually think the grays kind of tie it in nicely the black uh, you can tell it's a little harsh but honestly it's, it's what's working right now so um up here just giving you a little look I've got my fake plants I've got a whiteboard that really needs to be washed down a little better I've got a candle I have some more yarn in this yarn bowl I have this picture of Peyton and I actually this frame is super cute <laughs> it's really funny you wore the yarn to my stash but the picture I had is a little bit too big and it covers it and honestly it's kind of cheesy so maybe it's best that I have it like that. I got that kind of as a joke for Peyton. <laughs> and then this is my mood board, which is so cute. By the way, if we're not friends on uh, Instagram yet, let's be friends because that's where I'd love to chat with you, hang out with you. We have such a great community here, but we also have a really great community over there. I just love this. It keeps me motivated, inspired. It's a mood board, you know, we love it. And then over here, is just some stuff left over. Honestly, I don't know where these came from. They're probably the dollar store. They're like super cheap looking, <laughs> whatever. Maybe I'll put some fresh flowers in here one of these days, but this, these vases are from our wedding and I just repurposed them. This is 
the final look. Isn't that crazy? I feel like I don't have, I mean, I have a lot of yarn, but not as much as I have had in the past. And actually it feels really good looking at this and just seeing how organized it is. Oh, it feels so good to have this done. I told you, I told you at the beginning of this video, we were gonna be feeling good. We were gonna be feeling organized by the end. And so I hope you're feeling really organized and really motivated as well. How I to thank you so much for hanging out with me in today's video. And if you want more videos like this, I definitely have more things I need to organize in this room. And if it helps you keep motivated, it definitely helps me keep motivated. And having accountability buddies, it's so good. I love it so much. So as we move into, well, it is a new year now. When I started this video, it was not the new year, but it is now the new year. As we are in 2024 now, I feel like like staying organized is one of my priorities. So definitely let me know. I can do some more videos like this one, but I just want to thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you want to watch another video where I go through and organize all my yarn, I will link it for you here on the screen. And I definitely had a lot more yarn in my stash that time around, but this time I'm feeling pretty good about this. Like, I mean, look how cute. We're going to have to get a little bit more just to fill it up. How am I ever going to get through this if I'm just constantly filling it up with yarn? Anyways, thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you, my friend, in this video right here. Bye.